What are the swing fundamentals and mechanics that allow someone like Wilco Nienaber to consistently hit the ball over 325 yards with the driver? Now, this may or may not be a name that you've heard, but it certainly is a name that you'll be hearing. Wilco Nienaber is 23 years old. He already has a professional win. And simply put, he is probably the longest professional golfer right now. However, when you look at the golf swing of Nienaber, you probably don't see a golf swing like some of Bryson DeChambeau's thrash at the ball that he tries to hit 350 yards. It's a much more fluid move, but there are so many idiosyncrasies of this golf swing that anybody can learn from to hit their driver even 10, 15 yards longer. First off, let's talk about how Nienaber addresses the golf ball with driver. It is a stable base with a little bit of what we call toe flaring. Toe flaring is when you take a standard foot position and you bring your toes outside of where your heel lies. And what this allows you to do is it opens up your hip flexors a little bit and makes rotation more easy throughout the golf swing. So if you're just standing or sitting at a desk somewhere and your feet are fairly aligned with your toes, and your foot is fairly straight on in relation to your legs, try flaring out those toes just a little bit and you can actually feel the difference in your hips. Now, if you implement this even slightly into a golf swing, it will certainly improve a little bit of your rotation and oftentimes proper rotation through the ball leads to an explosive move and high speed. However, this is certainly not the highest contributing factor. Another great part about the base is the width of the base and the athletic stance that Nienaber has over the ball. Uh, when you're swinging hard, when you're swinging fast, especially with driver, having that stable base is very important in keeping you grounded over the ball. Now let's move on to the takeaway. Nienaber does have a fairly wide takeaway, especially with the driver. What a wide takeaway can often do is it can load up your backswing nicely, but it will also lead you to a more shallow move through transition. Now, if you're super uh, narrow and you don't have that width through transition, if you're narrow, the frequent tendency is to come over the top, which would lead to a slice. So if you counteract that with a wide takeaway, you'll be a little bit more shallow and that shallow move will Will create a draw. If you're looking to add distance to your driver and something that Wilco turns to very often is hitting the draw, draws go longer than fades. That's just the nature of the ball flight. So having that wide takeaway not only puts him in a great position at the top of the backswing, but through transition, it allows him to hit the draw, which will intrinsically add yardage to your shots. One thing that is super, super interesting to me about the golf swing of Wilco Nienaber is he does not have a crazy long backswing. Now, it's it's not as short as someone like John Rahm or Tony Finau, but it's not as long as someone like Justin Thomas or Hideki Matsuyama. It's fairly mid-length, but the hands are pretty high. And one thing that is super important is if you look at that shoulder rotation, I don't think there's better shoulder rotation out there in a professional golf swing. He is entirely perpendicular in his shoulder line to that target line, which not only takes a great deal of flexibility, but it takes strength and precision in the golf swing to do this. So my advice on this aspect of Wilco swing would not be to get those hands as far back and get them just pinned back there almost painfully in the back of the transition. That, that wouldn't be it at all. Get those hands in and those arms in a, in a fairly succinct straight position. But if you can get that upper body rotation, get those shoulders pointed even further away. Get that for a right-handed golfer. Try and pin that right shoulder as far back as you can comfortably and do Doing some stretches and some flexibility work can certainly help get that range of motion improved so that we can get a few extra yards out of this aspect of the golf swing as well. And you cannot have a long, powerful golf swing without unbelievable usage of the lower body. You see right in this transitionary move how Wilco's right knee uh, extends and leverages the ground fully. So what that left knee is doing is pushing up on the ground, allowing those hips to clear right at at impact so that everything is working together to maximize speed as he goes through the ball. You'll also notice that trail knee kind of flexing inward. It becomes a little bit inverted. And what that inversion doing is beginning the uncoiling of those hips. And then the left knee extending is continuing
continuing that rotation of the hips. So there's a lot of lower body motion uh, that's especially important through the move in impact that a lot of golfers don't really think about. It's very popular to think about your upper body, where your hands are, how your wrists are moving through the ball. When in reality, through the impact positioning, uh, so much of that power, so much of the strength in the golf swing is going to inherently come from that lower body motion. Now, Nienaber is someone who can hit 200 mile an hour ball speed. He can carry the ball 350 yards. But the most impressive thing that I think about his swing is the tempo at which he swings it and the balance that he has. So many of these guys, especially if you look at professional long drivers, they take the club back with such intense speed. Uh, obviously, that's in effort to get lag, which is fine for that realm of golf. But if we're looking to hit fairways, the goal is not to take the club back as fast as humanly possible. It's to get yourself in the right positions. Now, no matter how fast you take it back, it's the speed that comes down through transition. And that's what's going to matter. So be careful when trying to swing faster that you're not increasing and making your tempo more rushed. If someone like Wilco Nienaber can hit the ball as far as he can with this silky smooth tempo, then I think most people can too. It's just about the positioning that you get through impact. Another aspect that certainly cannot be overlooked in Wilco Nienaber's swing is the balance that he has uh, through transition and through the follow through. Now, if you've ever been on the course with your buddies and someone says, oh, I'm going to try and hit this one a little bit, a little bit further out there, nine times out of 10, they will not be able to hold their follow through. They're going to be off balance because they swung too hard. And if you can't hold your balance through the follow through, you're certainly not going to be able to hold your balance through impact. And that's when it matters. So be sure that however, however much speed you're chasing, however fast you're trying to swing the golf club, none of it matters unless you can stay balance through the golf swing. A great quote from Tiger Woods is, I try to swing the club as fast as I can while guaranteeing center face contact and remaining balanced. So if you can do those two things in your golf swing, uh, you can swing as fast as you can as long as you're not compromising those other two aspects. Nienaber has one professional win to his name, but he has some status on the PGA Tour and we see him a lot on the DP World Tour. I'm curious to see what he can do in his future. Obviously, hitting the ball far is great, but you have to have a super tidy short game to compete out there on the professional tours, but I think there's a bright future for this young 23-year-old. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the golf swing of Wilco Nienaber. Let me know if you have any questions on anything that I mentioned throughout this video or anything that I may have failed to mention on the golf swing, any confusions you have, comment them down below. I read and reply to all comments on these videos. As always, we thank you all very much for watching. Play well and take care.